In today's video, I want to rebuild a tool from an add-on, this tissue add-on for Blender. And this is an add-on that I'm quite fond of, because back in the day, when I didn't know Houdini and Blender Geometry Nodes wasn't a thing, this is the tool I used to create organic shapes for my works, organic shapes that looked somewhat like this. And the main tool from this add-on that I'm interested in works a bit like this. We can build a square patch of geometry, a component, and we can have some base mesh. And what we can do with the add-on is we can take this component, this patch, and simply copy it onto every face of our base mesh. And in the end, this results in this new, a lot more interesting geometry right here. So if you want to rebuild this in Houdini, is there any geometry concept, any technique that we can use to make our life easier? And well, there is, and that technique is called Prim-UV coordinates. This is something that we tackled a bit in previous tutorials. However, we didn't spend much time here. So I want to use the first part of this tutorial to build some intuition into how those prim UV coordinates actually work. So first of all, let's start in an empty scene. Let's drop down a geo node. Let's dive inside. And first of all, as a test object, I just want to drop down a platonic. And for now, let's simply set this to cube. Now those prim UV coordinates that I talked about are in some ways similar to traditional UV coordinates, however there are still some differences and I first of all want to visualize them. To visualize those, I first of all want to drop down simply a null as an input, let's call it n, and first of all I want to scatter points on my cube here. And I want to use those points to later sample the prim UV coordinates that I talked about. For this we need a whole lot of points, so in this case let's just turn off the relax iterations and let's just up the number of points to a million like this. And now let's drop down a point wrangle and let's use this to look up the closest prim UV coordinate on each face of our base geo for each point that we're working on here. So let's worry in our points in the first input and our main geometry in the second input. Now to sample the prim UV coordinates, there is a function that we can use and it's called xyzdist. This expects first of all a geostream, this will be geostream1 for the second input, then a position to sample from, this is our v at p, the position of a point, and then this is a function that won't return a value that we can later save inside a variable that we write in front of this function. This expects to have some variables in here that this function can simply write to. And this will be first of all the primitive face that is closest to the point and the UV coordinate that we're interested in, the prim UV coordinate. We need to create those variables that we passed in. So first of all, let's create an int variable called prim and then also a vector variable called UV like this. And what I want to do with this UV coordinate that I sampled is I simply want to write it out to a UV attribute. So v at uv is equal to a uv variable that we created. Something like this. To make this visible, I want to use an attrib from map to simply color our points with a simple uv grid. And if we drop this down, as we can see, what our prim uv coordinates are, are essentially a unwrapped uv square for each face of our object. We can maybe make this a bit more intuitive, a bit better to see if we drop down just another point wrangle. And we simply use this to lerp from a position in 3D space to a position in UV space. So to do this, let's write v at p is equal to a lerp, a linear interpolation from a v at p position to a v at uv position. And let's lerp with a simple slider. And if we move our slider here, every face of our cube simply moves to its UV position like this. This is for quads. Let's maybe try triangles as well. So let's set a platonic from cube to tetrahedron. Now UV coordinates look a bit strange. Let's see what's happening here. Let's move them to UV space. And as we can see, each triangle face in a mesh is simply a UV square in here cut in half. And let's take a look at angons as well. Let's turn this maybe into a dodecahedron. Now prim UV coordinates look like this. And at this point, it's a bit hard to see. So let's maybe introduce in front of an input object a blast node and simply blast everything but the first primitive, something like this. And if we now transform this to UV space, we can see that a UV square gets simply wrapped around the center of our n-gon. 
And what we could imagine if we take a look at this lerp function here is instead of taking simply a lot of points that form a UV grid, we could build a patch of geometry in this UV space and then also use a function to transform it to the prim UV space, which would move it to each face of our object. And this is exactly what we want to do today. There is one thing that I want to change in here, because right now I'm using the prim UV coordinates of Houdini. And there's another set of prim UV coordinates that we can use that I think is a bit better suited for our needs. And this is the open subdiv patch coordinates. We can get an idea how they look if we translate from uh, Houdini prim UV coordinates to this new set of UV coordinates. First of all, let's turn off the blast node again. Let's take a look at our full geometry. And now in here, the function that we want to use in this case is called OSD for open subdiv and look up patch like this. And this should be on GS31. We have to put in the primitive that we found up here with our XYZ list function. Let's put in prim right here. Then we have to put in the UV coordinates that we found with this function. So this will be uv.x and uv.y. And then again, we want to write what we found here out to some variables. And in this case, let's make this a bit larger. This will be instead of a prim, this will be a UV patch. And this will be a float called patch u for the u coordinate and float called patch v for the v coordinate like this and again we'll have to create those variables so let's create an end variable called patch and the float variable called patch u and patch v like this and again we want to write this out to our uv coordinates so in this case let's use a set function and set this to patch u patch v and zero like this and now our patch coordinates have changed and Let's take a look at how they are changed. Let's maybe first of all switch to a simpler solid. Let's switch back to our tetrahedron. And if we now use a blend slider on the last wrangle, there's stuff happening. It's still a bit much. Let's maybe just focus on one face. Let's see what's happening here again. And now we can see how those open subdiv coordinates work. Essentially, each phase gets split into a number of quads depending on how many points are around these phases. And this is also true for Angon. So let's take a look at the dodecahedron. Again, we can see the same pattern here. The only exception is the cube or a quad, because in this case, we still get a normal UV grid. And I think this tessellation is a lot nicer than the default one with Houdini. And also we get an extra bit of functionality by using those OSD functions in Houdini because OSD has a neat feature. Again, this is built around the OpenSubdiv workflow and OpenSubdiv gives us the possibility to also write back attributes, for example, the P attribute, but write them back in a way as if our geometry would be infinitely subdivided. So to quickly demonstrate this, I can create a vector pause for my points position and I can look up this vector pause again with a OSD function. So in this case, OSD limit surface. And this will take in a country stream, the name of the attribute that we want to sample, then a OSD patch that we found earlier, then a patch u and a patch v. And finally, the variable that we want to write to, in this case, pause. And now let's write this back to a position. So v at p is equal to pause. And now for this single face, this doesn't change much. So let's disable our blast node. But now, as we can see, a cube has turned into a sphere or something similar to a sphere, basically a cube that is infinitely subdivided. And we can also check this by dropping down a subdivide node and setting the level really, really high, a level of four and compare this to a point wrangle in the end and the subdivide node. And yes, these are both the same shape. So this will not only allow us to copy our patch geometry to our faces, but also to copy this in a very smooth way. Now those OSD tricks is something that I learned from Konstantin Magnus. He already published two great tutorials with some other techniques regarding those. These are linked down in the description. I can highly recommend those. They are some really, really handy techniques. But now let's finally move on to our main setup and get building here. First of all, I want to bring in two files. So let's drop down a file node and this will first of all be my patch. And you can find this in the scene files that you can download. 
and this will be patch03.bgeo and this is simply a bit of geometry that I simply poly modeled in Blender. Then I also want to bring in a base geo that we want to copy onto and you can also find this in the scene files and you can also find the teaser image scene file in there if you're curious and how I did the preview animation or the teaser animation. But this will be target03 and this is this is simple piece of geometry right here. And now let's work on getting this patch onto this target geo. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to set up a for loop and a for loop that should run as many times as we have subdivision patches in our main geometry here. So we should find first of all the total number of OSD patches. For this, let's simply drop down an attribute rank. Let's wire this onto our target geo. Let's call this maybe num patches. Let's set the run over to detail and I want to create an attribute called num patches as well and I can find the number of patches by using the osd underscore patch count function and this simply gets as an input the geostream so geostream zero and now if you go to our geo spreadsheet onto detail we have on num patches right here and crucially this number of patches is different to the number of primitives in our mesh because again we're dividing each primitive up depending on how many points or vertices that primitive has. Now let's set up a for loop. For this I want to use a for loop with feedback as a base however I want to modify this quite a bit. First of all let's burn our geometry in here and I want to set first of all the number of iterations that this loop runs equal to the number of patches that we found here. So on the iterations parameter right here, I want to write an expression, a detail expression. I want to reference my numpatches node right here, like this. The attribute that I want to grab is called numpatches. And finally, I want to grab the first component of that attribute. And I got some error here, let's take a look. And it's this semicolon at the back, we don't need this here. No, this should run like this. Next, I want to set the Gartha method of this loop here not to feedback each iteration. I simply want to merge each iteration. I want to merge each patch that we're creating back into a whole mesh in the end. Then I want to move on to the begin node of a for loop right here. And I want to set this not to fetch feedback. I want to set this to fetch input. So we're just referencing this geometry that we're putting in right here over and over and over again. We also need the same node for uh, input patch so let's wire this in here as well and I also need a meta import node so let's click this button right here because I later want to reference the current loops iteration like this and now with this done I can finally drop down a point wrangle and start writing our deformer in here now for this point wrangle the first input should be the patch the second input should be the geometry that we're copying onto and the third node should be our meta import node of reference to the current loops iteration. And inside our patch, I first of all want to grab the current loops iteration because this will be the patch that we're currently processing. Let's call and patch is equal to a detail function that should look on geostream2. And the attribute that we want to grab is called iteration, like this. And now what I simply want to do is I want to use the same OSD limit surface function that we used earlier. I want to use this to sample the position that we want to move each point to. Because as we can see with this patch, this patch is already built inside the prim UV space that we talked about earlier. This square from a point of 0, 0 to 1, 1. And I want to simply look up the point coordinates and find new coordinates in the space of the current patch that we're processing. So to do this, let's use our OSD limit surface function. Let's look on geostream one. We want to grab the P attribute. We want to use the patch that we found. And again, we want to look for the UV coordinate of the piece of geometry that we created. So this will be V at P dot X dot Y because we built that object in the UV space of our prim UV coordinates. And finally, we need the variable that we want to write to. And in this case, this will be a pause. And we need to create pause. Let's create a vector called pause as a variable. And now finally, let's write this back out. So v at p is equal to pause. And as soon as we do this, we see stuff happening. And this is already sort of working. We have our patch geometry now copied 
onto each corner of our faces, which is exactly what we want. The only problems that I can see is that our geometry is quite flat because we're not taking into account the Z component of our position vector. And also we have these square patches in here, which use a different coordinate system and these look quite odd here as well. So these are two problems that we need to fix. Let's maybe first of all work on making our geometry 3D. And my idea here is to not only sample our position from our USD lookup patch, but also the normal. And then we can move each point that we're processing along this normal vector the length of its own Z component. Let's try this. First of all, our geometry needs normals. So let's simply drop down a normal node onto this second geostream right here. And let's add normals to points like this. And in here, I want to look up the normal vector the same way as I did with my position vector. So let's create a vector called norm. This should grab an attribute called n, and this should write it to a norm variable. And now we need to update our VHP function down here. So VHP will now be our position plus our normal times our VHP dot z coordinate like this. And now this gets a lot more 3D, a bit too much 3D. Let's turn this down a bit. And in this case, I want to simply just multiply it by some constant, in my case, a value of 0.2, like this. And now this looks a lot better. Right now, this geometry is turned inside out. We can easily fix this by just inverting our constant right here, minus two. This looks now a bit better. And we can drop down a normal node down here to fix our normals as well. And now. This is looking quite good. And we're actually quite finished already. We just have to fix those square patches up here. So what I want to do here to fix those is quite a simple and quick and dirty fix. I want to just look up the square faces inside my mesh and I want to just divide them down the middle. So to select our square faces, let's drop down a group expression node. Let's create a group called quads. And to find those quads, the function that I can use is the prim vertex count function. This needs a current geostream, so geostream zero and a current prim num. I want to simply check if this is equal to four. And we've got some error, let's take a look. And I got a typo here, prim vertex count like this. And now this selects our square faces and we can simply turn those into triangles with a divide node. Let's drop this down and just work on are quads and now these are both triangles and if we now take a look at our geometry now this looks like the thing that we want now we're pretty much done here i just want to do some small simple things to make this tool a bit more usable first of all we should make sure that this input patch that we're putting into our tool right here always lives inside this prim uv coordinate space and we can do this with a match size function a match size node. Let's drop this down. Let's use scale to fit and let's update the target position, the target box position up here. And this should go to a position of 0.5 in X and 0.5 in Y and 0 in Z. So now it's definitely always inside the prim UV space. And then another thing that we need to do is we need to fuse together those points along the edges in here because right now they're still just open points, so open edges. And for this down here, we can use a group node where this is below our match size. Let's call this group open. Let's set the group type to points. Let's disable our base group and include by edges and include by unshared edges. This just selects um, points right here at the edges. And then after our loop down here, we can drop down a fuse node, add this in and simply work on our open points. And I think I may need to adjust the snapping distance. Let's maybe add a zero in here. And yeah, now this looks better. And now we should be able to drop down a subdivide node, make our mesh a bit more smooth. And yeah, this is working. So this is my take on rebuilding a bit of the functionality of the tissue add-on inside Houdini. And also my take on working with the OSD functions inside Houdini, because I think they are really, really handy and not many people know about them. Again, if you want to know more about the Prime UV functions, you can also take a look at the tutorials by Constantine Magnus. They are linked in the description. And until next time, it's cheers and goodbye. And if you like us and want to support us, 
or just want to learn more about Houdini in End of Courses, consider becoming a patron of ours. And to everyone already supporting us, thank you so much guys. Without you, Entagma would not be possible. With a very special thank you going out to Mohamed Alabri, Umamiya Ichigo, Joseph Horton and David Aiden. Thanks so much guys.